What's up, people? In this video, <coughs> excuse me, we are going to watch this How to Stop Binge Eating Once and for All by Kinobody, aka Greg something. I think Greg, right, is his name? Um, I, I know who this guy is. I haven't, I don't think I've watched, I think I watched like one of his old videos where he's like doing handstands or something. Um, so, yeah, since uh, I am now no longer the mukbang expert, now I'm the fucking or mukbang reviewer and I'm the eating. All right, so um, this video is gonna be really, really important because in this video, the eating disorder guru um, or villain or something, whatever. Anyway, we're gonna watch this. If you guys have any other videos or YouTubers that you would like me to take a look at, let me know. Also try and keep them under 20 minutes if possible. I, I do get some requests for videos that are like an hour or like 45 minutes and like, you know, if, if I do a video that's 45 minutes, if the video itself is 45 minutes, even if I speed it up at two times speed, which I don't like to do, I try to keep it um, 175 or lower. Um, that's gonna be a long video, and like I, I don't mind to do the long videos, but uh, I just I don't know. I feel like they should stay like in the 20 to 30 minute range. Like my video should be that much total. But I don't know. Whatever. If it's really good, you know, maybe I'll do it. But just keep that in mind if you recommend a video to me. Okay. So how to stop binge eating once and for all? Curious as to what this guy will say. So here we go. We're gonna talk about binge eating and how do you stop binge eating once and for all. And in case you didn't know, this was something that I actually struggled with for um, quite a long period of time and it was really, really brutal. So you're going through it right now. Um, I completely empathize with you. Um, but the good news is we can fix it. Um, and once we get a few little things in place, um, you can fix it um, pretty fast. Uh, now before we get into the strategies, uh, I just wanna let you know that the Bamboo, the Kino Bamboo Raglan t-shirts are back in stock. Um, we released a few days ago with a thousand and now we're down to like 300 or so. And unfortunately, one of our sizes and colors sold out and that's the black large raglan our most popular um but if you want to check that out and pick up some raglans you can actually hit the link in the description the shirt is perfectly cut to enhance your physique hug the shoulders and chest and drape perfectly to put your physique on effortless display now let's get into the actual um strategies to improve or to basically stop um binge eating now crazy enough um, right now um you know it's you know i just had a little uh, magnum ice cream bar I had a little magnum ice cream bar I think it was like 230 calories or 250 calories it was delicious and i had one i'm satisfied and that's it. And that's what, where you want to get to the point where, you know what, if you want to indulge, if you have a penchant for ice cream bars or, you know, chocolate or french fries, you can eat it without guilt in moderation. And then you feel great and you continue on with your life. Um, that's the place where you want to get to. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of people, um, they get stuck in this pattern where they eat something, you know, they, they, they eat something that they feel like they shouldn't have eaten. They feel guilty and then hell breaks loose and they have one one ice cream bar of 230 calories which is fine you can fit that into your diet if you structure it properly it turns into three and four and then they just go down this downward spiral with binge eating um and the problem with binge eating um from a fat loss standpoint is that you know in one day you can do some serious <coughs> okay so he's right um you do want to get to the point where you can eat those things and you know in moderate if you want to and not like go to pieces basically um this might be taboo to say maybe you, some of you don't agree with this but it's it's like i guess drug abuse right or alcohol abuse I, I, the goal you know i think the goal should be to be able to like have a drink and not like have to like slam like 20 shots every time you like have a sip you know what i mean or indulge in whatever you really want to indulge in without it like dominating your life um i think one one thing that i will point out about what he said is that as he's describing the, the binging process and he says, you know, you eat something, basically what happens is you eat something that you shouldn't have eaten and you feel guilty about it. And then he used the phrase, all hell breaks loose, right? I, I mentioned this in another video. I think it was the learning to be a fighter video where he, the guy uses a lot of these like metaphors basically that um, kind of, they're not literal explanations of what the behavior is. And I think when you, um, when you use a metaphor to explain behavior, you run the risk of not, uh, of like kind of masking the solution, so to speak, right? So all hell breaks loose. That's a, that's a problem with no solution, right? And this is nitpicking. Like I'm, it sounds like he's on the right track with his advice. I'm not sure. But 
if instead, if he had said something like, you eat something that you shouldn't have eaten, you feel guilty, and then you think to yourself, well, I already ate that one thing, I've already ruined my diet for the day, I might as well eat more. You think those thoughts yourself, and then you buy more, and you eat more, and then before you know it, you've, you know, as the day goes on, you eat more and more, and then you feel bad, and then you repeat the process day after day, right? Nitpicking, for sure. But I think if, if, you a- if somebody out there actually wants to, like, cure their eating disorder, or, like, stop doing this, then in my opinion, you need to describe the problem in literal terms, right? If, if you can, if you actually want to solve the problem, a lot of people just like being victims, but describe it in literal terms. And then it's very clear what the solution is, right? If you buy bad food and you eat it and you feel guilty and you keep buying it, what's the solution? Don't buy it anymore. Right? Anyway, so here what he has to say. Very damage. You can, you know, if you're not careful and if you just keep eating, I mean, you can pack on you know, a massive surplus. It's gonna, it's gonna basically undo days and days and days of successful dieting if you're not careful. Um, because here's the problem with fat loss is that it takes a hell of a lot longer to burn off calories than it does to eat calories. So in a very short period of time, you can eat, you know, 2,000 calories, which is more than half a pound of, of, of potential weight gain, assuming that's stacked on as a surplus. Um, but for you to burn 2,000 calories, additionally, it's not gonna happen. That's a hell of a lot. It's not gonna happen. You have to be exercising for hours and hours on end. Um, but so here is the deal. Now, the first thing we need to realize is what causes binge eating. You see, I, I grew up as a kid, a teenager, never ever had binge eating. Never had binge eating. I just, you know, I would indulge, I'd have this and that, um, but it was, I never got into that, like that, that constant eating um, beyond what's necessary. Um, it was only until I really started dieting, really started getting lean, doing low carb dieting, doing, doing low calorie dieting, doing lots of cardio, trying to keep myself on a, in, a, in a really big deficit that binge eating became a thing. You see what happened was I was starving myself. I was going way too low in calories. And when you do that, that's what is going to bring on the binge eating um, habit. You see, whenever you go too extreme, uh, it's like, was it like Newton's law or something? You know, if one extreme action is always followed by uh, another extreme action in the opposite direction. So if you go too extreme on dieting, it's going to cause a rebound. If you diet too hard and you push through that pain, um, you push that discomfort, it's going to backfire. This is what happens. Um, this is human nature. We only have so much willpower. And as we use all that willpower to stick to our, to our diet, to be, to be really, really uh, depleted, to be hungry, um, eventually that willpower is going to break. And when it breaks, it's going to be very, very difficult to control yourself. You see, when you Okay, so I, fuck, this is gonna be a long video. Um, so I, I think that's interesting. What he says about we only have so much willpower, and once that willpower is depleted, um, you know, we like lose control and do whatever we want. I, I I believe that to be true as well. There's a very interesting book. Oh shit, I think it's called like Willpower: The Greatest Human Strength or the Hidden Humanity's Greatest Strength, something like that, uh, by Roy Baumeister. Very recommended that you guys read that book from beginning to end. It's amazing. Um, and basically what he says in the book is that willpower is basically like a muscle and in the beginning when you when you first start training this muscle you have a limited amount and then the more you use discipline the more like uh, the more you exercise the muscle right and like do things to, like discipline yourself the the stronger the muscle gets and the larger your like reserve tank of willpower gets right and if you just examine like anybody like I just did this video on Amon Ra the like you know, the like ripped black guy who eats like a thousand calories of beans a day. The dude is super disciplined. If you listen to him, like he has like his little like amino acid mix. He works out twice a day. Um, He fasts for 23 hours a day and he meditates all the time, right? All those things require willpower. Okay. This is not like, and again, this is one of the reasons why I maybe sound like a dick when I talk about this eating disorder shit is because like, no offense girls, uh, but y- you don't have any discipline, which is why you're allowing yourself to do this. And a lot of this is just written off as like, well, actually, it's this. It's because of this, and it's not our fault. And the neural pathways, and like, we're different than everybody else. So you're you're not allowed to say we don't have discipline because, you know, it's not our responsibility. It's you know, m- the magic food or something, which I think is is dumb. Um, another thing that I'll point out about what he said is that. You know, okay, so first of all, I'm preface this by saying like somebody like this, I'm much more likely to take what they say seriously than like, I don't know, most other people. The dude is jacked for sure. And from the few videos that I've seen of him, he knows how to change his body composition, number one, which takes work, right? You need to be very aware of what certain foods and activities are doing to your body, which like sounds easy, but automatically puts you like head and shoulders above most people. Um, What was the other reason? I don't know, whatever, anyway. Uh, however, one thing that I that I have seen, and I'm not sure like where he's going with this, but one thing that I have seen with like kind of the old school bodybuilding community, is that they are more likely to have low calorie days as opposed to no calorie days, right? Like they're much more likely if they're training or whatever, trying to change their body in whatever way, to have like you know 
let's say their maintenance calories, which of course they know is 2000, they'll have 1200 calories for several days in a row in an attempt to cut, right? Whereas in my opinion, I think it's better to just fast. Once you have no calories for a few days, preserve a little bit of your muscle, um, and then just eat whatever you want, like binge eat, like go crazy on the right foods, of course. We'll get to that later. When you diet really, really extreme, what happens? You cause a downpour, you cause a downregulation in leptin. And leptin is a hormone that regulates your appetite and your metabolism. So when leptin levels go down, you know, a tank from, from dieting to extreme, then when you eat, it becomes very, very, very challenging to regulate your hunger. So you end up eating and overeating, overeating. Um, and then, so that's the first thing that, that causes binge eating is, is doing a diet that's way too extreme. Um, and the second aspect to that is when you associate guilt um, with screwing up on your diet. So you do a diet too extreme, you break, you indulge, you have the, you know, whatever, maybe it's the ice cream bar, maybe it's some french fries, or you go a little over your diet, over your calories. Now it's the guilt, and the research is very, very clear. When you have, when you, when you, when you are guilty about eating something, you're gonna eat, it, it, it's, it's uh, counterintuitive, but you're gonna eat a lot more. You see, um, they've done research studies where they had uh, participants go and go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. Um, and in one hand, and they had them like, like a lot of desserts, like donuts. And in one group, they told them, hey, you know what, don't worry, you know, you've earned this, you deserve this, it's okay to indulge, like go ahead, eat whatever you want. And that group, you know, they indulged, but they did so in moderation. The other group, they told them, like, they made them feel guilty, like, hey, like this, you should not eat even this, it's like junk, um, like after they had like, whatever, the first donut or whatever. And this, I, I don't know the exact specifics, but something around that. I might have read this a few years ago. Um, and the group that felt guilty, they ate a lot more, like it was like 50, 60% more um, total calories. So you can't be feeling guilty. Um, and that's the thing, you have to realize you're only human. Um, and, you know, it's, it's okay, it's okay to eat what you want, you know? That's very interesting. I'm sorry I'm pausing this so much, but this kind of, um, I don't know about that study. I've never heard that before ever. Like that's my first time hearing about that, but I think that might be, that's very interesting, right? If you feel guilty about what you're doing, and this is kind of to the point that I made earlier, right? When it, where I was talking about how he said all hell breaks loose instead of saying it in, li in literal terms, right? If you feel guilty, right? Let's say you eat or let's say you go into the binge feeling guilty and you feel guilty afterwards, you kind of have this mentality of, well, I kind of already fucked up. I shouldn't be doing this. This is bad. So I might as well like go crazy and like indulge myself, you know, beyond what I should, which now that I think about it, that's kind of the attitude actually that I have when I binge, right? Because I also eat generally like fairly clean, but when I, when I do binge, well, actually I don't really binge that hard anymore. I'm not sure. Hmm. Anyway, let's just keep watching. Some days I'll go a little over my calories and you know what? I don't feel guilty. I'm like, hey, you know what? That's fine. You know, I'm just listening to my body. If I need to go a little higher today just to stay just to stay kind of full, then I'll do that. It might slow down fat loss a little bit, but you know what? I'm still moving in the right direction. It might just take a little bit longer. That's totally fine. Some days I'll go 200 calories over if I really need to, if I feel hungry. Um, I've learned through years and years that if I really need something, if I'm like really, really hungry, um, there's some things you should push through, but sometimes you should listen to your body. And if you're really hungry, it's gonna, it's gonna just dwell on you. And you know what? Just have go a little higher. Just go a little higher because if you don't and you push through that, it's, you're probably gonna break and it's only gonna be worse. Um, um, then you go through that, that willpower, that, that, that discipline for nothing, just to break. So um, I'm throwing a lot at you right now. It's a lot, but just let it sink in. If you want to watch this video a couple times, that might be really, really helpful. That actually might be a really, really smart idea. So again, you know, it's important to listen to your body and not to associate guilt um, with going a little over your calories or eating something you don't think you should eat. In fact, you know, if you guys check out my programs, you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I tell you, like, hey, you're gonna be, we're gonna get you on the certain amount of calories for your goal, for fat loss, recomp, muscle gain, okay? Um, and you can eat the foods you want as long as you hit those calories. Um, you get pretty close to your macros, your proteins, fats, and carbs. You can incorporate the foods you want. So if you want to have a 230 calorie um, Magnum ice cream bar every night, and you fit that in, that is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to fit in, you know, if you like, you know, making, you know, potato wedges, then you fit in potato wedges. In fact, I actually am fond of fitting in desserts like not every dessert, um, but fitting in desserts like chocolate. Little ice cream bars um, as long because I find it it's satisfying, um, really satisfying. A lot of foods out there that people are eating that they think are diet friendly that they end up eating a ton of calories of. For example, almonds. Like a little handful of almonds is literally more calories than the ice cream bar I had, and the almonds aren't really gonna satisfy me um, if I have a sweet tooth like the ice cream bar. Well, I just ate it, and I'm like really satisfied. I'm not even thinking about food right now. Um, so it's important to realize that. See, when, when I structure the dieting, and I do a lot, and I build you know my diets, my programs for myself, I really have found the foods that really make dieting easy. It's like steaks, potatoes, lots of fruits, um, you know, cheese quesadillas, omelets, uh, stuff like that. You know, whatever breads or whatever can, can be fine. Um, stuff in that nature, you know, some chocolate, some chocolate on bars. You want to eat the diets that keep you really, really satisfied. And if you want to have the chocolate ice cream bar, you fit it in so there's no guilt. And that's the great thing about, you know, when you start tracking your calories, your macros within reason, or, you know, you do that for a little bit and you start eyeballing, well, it becomes really, really effective because now you actually know that, hey, I can have this ice cream bar and get leaner. Therefore, there's no guilt. Therefore, I'm going to stop eating um, once I finish it because there's no guilt. Um, so really, really key, key strategy. Now, the other thing to mention, right? The other thing to mention. 
Uh, that's good advice, right? What did he say? <coughs> okay, so I guess the one thing that I like don't agree with here, just from personal experience, right, is the whole counting the calories, counting the macros. Like, I am not about to do all that. I've never been like into doing that. I also don't look like this guy, right? I, w I wish I did, but I don't. So what can you do? Um, I just think that it's it's much easier to like what did, what did he say? He's like he he's been doing this for so long he's been counting his calories and like paying attention to what he eats like who the fuck even does that for so long that he knows what foods are going to make him full and make him satisfied what do you say steak potatoes omelets cheese quesadillas all right you know three out of four is not bad um but whatever fine if, if that like you can have cheese quesadillas it's not going to like ruin your health right obviously trains hard um and then what else did he say um yeah, and you can like so so what's what's the point? Why do I say like I'm just like over this whole counting calories thing? Because like w what do you have to do? And of course, this guy's been doing this for a long time and like it's native to him, right? He doesn't have to like, you know, what what did he say? He's like you count your calories at first and then you eyeball it, right? Meaning like you look at a piece of steak and you're like, "Yeah, I can eat that much and I'll be full," right? You just you don't need to get as granular with it. Um and I guess that's the end goal, right? Is to to be able to eyeball it and just know that it's enough, if that makes sense, or know that it's at least like within a range of enough. Um, the the only difference, I guess, that I see with this that I think to be necessary is eating once seems much easier to me than like eating all these meals throughout the day. That's number one. Um, number two, not necessarily counting your calories, but focusing more on eating the right foods, right? Like, like he said, he knows already what foods will make him more full. So just eat those foods, eat once a day and eat as much as you want, eat until you're full. Um, yeah, so let's go. Mention, which is gonna be really important, is that some foods are gonna be a lot easier for you to, for you to control than other foods. For example, um, I can have an ice cream bar and stop eating. I can have a chocolate almond bar or chocolate turtles and stop eating. Um, but historically, if I get the, the, the container of ice cream and I make a bowl, I tend to make another bowl. Um, if I have cookies and I have a few cookies, I tend to want a few more and I, and I, and I tend to do that. Um, so I found that certain foods, uh, certain delicious foods, some are easier to stop eating than others and some just you just want more and more. So you have to figure out what those foods are for you. Um, maybe in the beginning, it's a little bit tricky with everything, but you will get better. So I've just found that I do really, that I find like an ice cream bar, like a, a, like a certain amount of chocolate, just it's way easier stuff um, than cookies or ice creams or even cakes and stuff that that always makes me want a little more but you know i've gotten better so it is it is a it is a, a tool that you know it is a skill that you will sharpen with time it's a skill that you will learn to sharpen and it all comes down to the first few things um you know don't go too low in calories don't starve yourself um you should be trying to find a diet where you actually feel satisfied almost every day as you get leaner or within reason if there's, maybe there's a little bit of hunger but overall you know it's something you can commit to long term if you're really hungry if it's really painful it's just, just absolutely it's not gonna work only for the short term will it ever work and it will not work in the long term um then you know find the foods and things that keep you really satisfied and find the desserts that, that you can finish your calories um but also you're good at stuff you can stop eating on that and you know what even if you do everything perfect even if you follow all this advice you will screw up you know there probably is a chance that you will binge eat. and you know what when that happens don't feel guilty you know pat yourself on the back and be like, hey you know what i messed up a little bit let me learn from this let me find out what happened why did i do this why did i go what was the story i told myself maybe i told myself oh you know what i'm stressed work is stressful so then you, you got into this pattern uh, but let me try and make a note of how i can avoid doing that in the future you know maybe when work's stressful i'm gonna go for a walk or i'm gonna go meditate or you know what i'm you know maybe find some other solution um you know uh, or you know what maybe when i find work stressful i'm gonna have this food already planned that i'm gonna eat and i'm just gonna have one of these and fit it in and allow myself to go maybe a little bit higher but within reason you need to find it's really about learning from your mistakes and that's the key in life whether it's getting lean whether it's building a business whether it's all right it's kind of all over the place but this is all good advice this is like th this is all true this is all good advice and in in my opinion the, the reason what did I say in the beginning of this video? I'm much more likely to take a guy's like this advice than a doctor or like a nutritionist or like somebody who like, w why do I say that? The guy, the dude obviously works out. The dude obviously like knows about nutrition. Does he have a degree in nutrition or fucking anything? I, I mean, nothing against him. He probably does. Maybe he does. I don't know. But he's not, th were, did you, qu like aside from that one study about guilt, has he quoted any studies? No. And that one study about guilt studied something specific between two groups and came to a very clear conclusion, right? There's no like, you know, stupid numbers involved about like, well, you know, these levels versus those levels. It's all practical real world experience basically is what I'm saying. Judging from my own experience, what he said about don't binge on foods that are easy to binge on, can totally relate. The whole like cookies thing, if I buy, like when I, you know, when I live in America, it's much easier to binge, right? Because you can't just go, I mean, I guess there's places where you can go and buy like one cookie, but most of the time they come in a box, you know? And like you buy a box, you're gonna eat the whole box. I, I am at least, right? Um, so of course, like true. Uh, 
I, it even got to the point where when I would go grocery shopping for food, I would look for something that w came in a small box, right? Because I, I knew in my mind, it was like, fuck, if I buy this, if I have this in the house, I'm going to eat all of it, you know? But I still, I want to buy it. I want to eat it. But I only want like a couple, you know? I don't want to buy the whole fucking box. Um, I'm not really sure what the solution is to that. I guess just, just not buy it. Um, and like, you know, let's say... Uh, like Cheez-Its, I love Cheez-Its, or like the goldfish crackers, oh my god, I'll eat the entire thing, um, so like, you, I, can't, I can't buy those, you know, unless I plan ahead of time, like he said, you plan ahead of time and you work it in, yeah, this is, this is all good advice, um, what else did he even say, I, I'm not sure if I disagree with anything here, uh, the, I guess, I'm, I'm trying to think ahead and think like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't some women follow this? I, I guess I guess what it really comes down to is the guilt. Um, if you feel guilty about that, it's kind of tricky. Like, I, I guess okay. So so why do fit people not feel guilty about binging? Right? Think about that. He's obviously fit. I'm pretty fit. We don't feel guilty about binging because we have all these other uh, habits in our life that are fairly healthy, and we know that even if we like go crazy, like let's say, let's just say that, you know, I, I can't speak for him. I can speak for myself. Let's say that I wake up tomorrow and I decide like, okay, today's a cheat day. I'm going to do like one of these like YouTuber cheat days and eat a ton of like really good tasting food. That's really like not healthy and just terrible. Okay. And I get to 10,000 calories, let's say whatever. Um, and I eat donuts and like all this awful food, right? Am I, am I going to feel guilty about that in the grand scheme of things? Probably not, because I know that literally one day of fasting will will like make up for it completely. Like actually, like one forty eight hour fast after that, I'll be good as new. Probably even better than when I started, just because I you know have these like habits in place that I can choose to you know execute if I want to. I'm not sure. I, it doesn't sound like he does fasting, but I'm sure he'll do like his version of that. Like maybe he'll have a day that's like lower calories or something. Um, and then final point before he goes into like whatever he's talking about now, uh, I think the main culprit here is the under eating. Okay. It's the, it's the cycle of under eating and slowing your metabolism as a result of thinking, you know, okay, it's what it really is, is under eating and under eating on the wrong foods and then binging on the wrong foods, right? So you under eat, you slow your metabolism. I should make a video on this. Whatever. You under eat. You slow your metabolism. Okay, because you're eating fucking like clean food, whatever. Um, and then one day you just like lose control and you're guilty and you binge on like a ton of trash. Uh, so your slow metabolism is like not used to digesting all this trash. And then you gain weight and then you under eat again. Slows your metabolism again. And it's like, like you said, like a downward spiral. Just gets worse and worse and worse. Relationships, you gotta learn from your mistakes. And a lot of people don't learn from mistakes. They just beat, beat themselves up, beat themselves up. Oh, I'm stupid, I'm stupid. No, hey, you made the decision. There's a reason why you did it. It's okay. Everyone's done it. I've done it probably more than anyone. You just gotta learn from it. You just gotta learn from it. And by taking away the guilt, by accepting yourself and accepting the present moment, accepting that, hey, I did go over, by doing that, what happens? The guilt is gone. Now you can actually enjoy, you know, going a little higher in calories. And because the guilt's gone, you can stop. You can stop. You see, if you don't feel guilty, you're going to be able to stop. But if you do feel guilty, that negativity, that self-destruction is going to make you self-destruct even further. Trust me. Um, I have a hard time even bringing my brain into this mode because it felt so long ago. I've, I've shifted my thoughts and my patterns so much. So that feels like a completely like different place. Um, I can't even relate to being there just because it's been so long. I've divorced that, those mindsets, the, 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 the programming, the mental thinking from that. So if you have been binge eating, just realize, hey, it's okay. It's not your fault. Um, it's probably a few things that have led to it. Maybe it's a lot of work stress. Maybe you've been trying, you've been putting too much pressure on yourself, going too low in calories, doing too much cardio, and it's backfired. You know, it's, all right, so hope that was really helpful. Again, it comes down to a few things. You gotta nail the right calorie deficit. Don't go, don't go too low. Don't go too low in calories. Uh, somewhere where you can stay somewhat satisfied, right? Fit in the foods that you love and you want and you can eat and enjoy within reason. Incorporate those. Some days you're gonna be really hungry, even on that mod. All right. Oh man, really? More, four more minutes. Um, well, let's just let this go. Calorie deficit. If you need to go a little bit higher, do that and accept it. Like this is totally fine. It's okay. Let's just put it. Put some math for you. If you're in usually 500 calorie deficit, enough to lose a pound a week, and you want to go 200 calories higher, you're still in a deficit. You're still at 300 calorie deficit. Your body's still getting leaner. All right. So like, again, like I said, I'm I'm not. I I personally don't prefer this like counting calories, caloric deficit. It's too much work. It's too much math. Um, and why? Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't see the point. It's not worth it to me. It's like way too much work for the result, which you can get basically the same result just by fasting and then eating one meal and eating the right foods. So to the, to the point, what he said, I, I remember what I was going to say. So he said that like, what did he say before this clip? He's like, 
you know, it comes down to like feeling guilty and then you beat yourself up and you do it again and so on and so forth. Um, and that's why, right. And I think there's definitely something to be said about that, like I mentioned, but I think the, the real issue here is not having the habits in place to prevent that from spiraling out of control, right? The habits that he recommends to be in place seem to be like exercising on a regular basis, counting your calories and counting your macros. Okay. Which is, is good. You know, I mean, it's something at least, right? But you can think of it like a, a, a suit of armor, okay? If you have a suit of armor, let's say you don't have any armor, right? Which is like the equivalent of not having these habits in place and somebody hits you, let's say you're like a knight, I, I don't know, random example, and like the other like warrior or whatever like hits you with a club, you're likely to break your arm. Just random example, right? Um, but if you have the armor, right? It's, it's harder for the club, for the impact to like get through the armor and like break your bone because your bone is supported by the armor. That makes sense. And all of these habits are basically the armor. Okay. Um, again, like, like he said, or, or like I said earlier, I, the counting calories and macros, it's a lot of work. Like I, I don't want to count everything that I eat. Let me just like do my work that I have to do throughout the day and eat meat at night and like be done with it and like have a little bit of something sweet afterwards if I want. Like that's, but that's me, you know, I, maybe he's got it figured out. I'm not sure. Um, all right, let's, yeah. So it's fine. It might just take a little longer. There's no rush. As long as you're making progress in the right direction, there's no rush. You will get to where you want to you go. Um, what really screws people up is when they try and be too perfect, too perfect, too perfect, and then they break, right? Just like, uh, just like you know, a tree, as the wind hits it, it naturally sways to go with the flow. If it just stayed strict, and, and you know, it would fall over. It would break. It would weaken. Um, so you need to kind of let yourself have that flow. Once in a while, you want to go a little higher, completely fine. You have to go with the flow a little bit. Listen to your body. You don't, don't try and be perfect. If you try and be perfect, you're going to break. Um, and learn from those mistakes. Learn, you know, if you go a little over, learn from it. I'm always learning from it. Um, find the foods and the meals you love cooking and eating and enjoying within reason. Enjoy the process. And when you do want to have that ice cream bar, don't feel guilty. Enjoy it. Enjoy your eating ice cream. Be happy. Enjoy it. What's the point of having the ice cream bar if you're going to beat yourself up about it? And all that mental strain is horrible for you. All that guilt is horrible for you. Enjoy life. You know, I've, I have a theory that, you know what, like when people eat the, you know, I, I eat chocolate quite consistently, actually, quite often. Um, and I feel great. My health markers are amazing. I feel incredible. Um, but I think that those people that do that eat junk that make that feel guilty, I think the guilt does way more damage than a little bit of sugar. Um, um, so don't feel guilty. Um, be active, you know, um, and, and meditate, you know, being present, uh, you know, doing a little meditation, getting into the power of now, all this stuff has been really helpful because then you get, you get much more in tune um, with yourself, with the present moment. You get much more connected. You're not looking to feed your brain with entertainment. You're not looking to get away from the moment by distracting yourself, um, by binging. You're just, you're in tune. And that's been really, really helpful for me. Um, years ago, you know, this is, I've been, I've got this stuff dialed in for several years now, but back then it was really helpful for me. So I threw a lot of stuff at you guys. I threw a lot of stuff at you. Um, I apologize it wasn't as streamlined um, as it could have been, but you know what, we'll do some follow-up. So leave your comments. I'm gonna spend a couple hours reading all the comments. We'll get some follow-up videos on this because I think this is so helpful. Um, if there's one thing that I can do for you, um, and that's to help you, you know, get control out of your eating, you know, solve this binge eating thing, um, really build the body you want because if you're binge eating, it's gonna be so much harder to get the body you want. But if you wanna enjoy life, be able to treat yourself and get to your goal, that's where you wanna be. That's where you wanna be. You, know, you shouldn't have to choose between enjoying life and have six pack abs. I keep my abs year round, pretty effortlessly. I'm getting leaner right now, and I enjoy life, you know? Last night I had steak and french fries and it was amazing, a couple, a couple of margaritas, it was fun, it was really fun. So you need to enjoy life and get your body, and that's what I teach, and that's what this channel does better than anyone else. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you wanna check out the bamboo stuff that we have right now, we have a lot more coming in, but right now we have the raglans on deck. Link is in the description. Um, it's unreal, it's the softest clothing, it's all made from bamboo. Softest and best fitting clothing you'll wear. Just make sure to pick the right size, there's a little size chart you might wanna check out. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Hope Great, I'm a fan. How can you argue with that? Like. Honestly, when I was watching this, I was, you know, so, so basically like I'm, I'm watching this and I'm, I'm kind of on the one hand, I'm like thinking, okay, I have to like critique this video. But on the other hand, I'm thinking about all the videos that I made about a similar topic. And I'm like, this is so much more positive than my videos, <laughs> like way more positive. Um, this is a much more like encouraging, I think, message than what I've been saying. So it kind of made me think like, all right, may maybe not necessarily, maybe I've been too hard on this whole binge eating thing, but kind of got me thinking about that because like, this is very, uh, like, like, I guess what I've been saying lately is like, just stop doing it and just be more disciplined and like, stop crying about it basically. Um, but this was more like very encouraging and don't beat yourself up about it. It was like the other approach, I guess, right? It's like good cop, bad cop kind of thing. Um, and I, I guess the, the reason why I don't, I don't take that approach is because I feel like that, like, okay, so, so if you take what he says at face value, he's right, 100% right. Like, I believe all that stuff too. I, I think the danger of when you, when you 
uh, spread this message like this is that people will kind of pick and choose the parts of the message that they want to hear, right? Like he said some things like, don't beat yourself up about it if you, you know, cheat, if you like eat an ice cream bar or whatever, which is true, right? You shouldn't beat yourself up about it. But I think that that is often like taken out of context by people who actually should feel bad about it. They should, I think. Although now I'm beginning to wonder if this whole guilt thing um, is good, right? Like, so, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm like, all right, this is complex, okay? But like he says, don't feel bad about it if you eat an ice cream bar. That's good, right? Some girl who's out of shape, who feels bad about it normally, let's say she eats that ice cream bar and she's like, well, this like, you know, really handsome, you know, guy on YouTube said I shouldn't feel bad about it so I can eat it and it's okay, right? And then they eat it and it's okay. I, I would think that they would do that more often right is this a, is this a mistake in logic that it's actually the opposite that they'll do it less often um i'm not sure that that study that he said about the buffet is kind of interesting it's making me think about it a little bit um but yeah overall i mean i, I don't know uh interesting i i, I kind of wonder it's like because you, you look at snake diet guy right also very popular you know and he's very hard on people what like way harder than me calling people fat pigs or disgusting blah 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 it's his communication style right he's obviously not this guy but um that seems to work for people as well so like is it that certain people respond to certain messages or that you need both or I i'm not really sure what it is to be honest with you um but interesting, like, I, I, I like this. This guy deserves, like, whatever success he's had. Um, anyway, like, I guess, okay, final thought before I end this, like, video. Um, all of this stuff is, like, a means to an end. Okay, I should have said this earlier, but, like, counting calories is a means to an end. Counting your macros is a means to an end. Fasting is a means to an end. Carnivore, vegan, all of it is a means to an end, okay? It doesn't matter how you get to where you want to be. If you get there, that's it. Like, you could invent some new diet where you, like, I don't know, like you only, whatever, you drink like six cups of coffee a day and you work out like three times a day and you only do jumping jacks, whatever. Fine, if that's what gets you jacked, okay, great, fine, I'll try it, you know? Um, so I, I guess it's just more what works for the individual person. But again, you have to examine like, is this actually working for you? Or are you just kind of justifying your choice because you don't wanna do, you don't wanna do any hard work, right? Anyway, interesting video. Thank you for telling me to watch that. If you guys have any other suggestions for videos or YouTubers you want to take a look at, let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.